Now these bit axes can definitely get hot. They're typically gonna be run 24 seven, constantly hashing away to try to find the next Bitcoin block. Now, if you wanna get into overclocking to, well, hash faster and work harder and hopefully increase the likelihood that you're gonna be solving the next block or maybe to earn some sats, you can get into overclocking, and if you do, you may want to actually consider beefing up your cooling. <laughs> you can add bigger heat sinks and bigger fans like this to help keep the BIDX cooler as it's working harder. Now, there's a couple components here that are kind of key to keeping cool. The main one, of course, is going to be the ASIC. That's the main chip here underneath the heat sink, underneath the fan that's actually doing all of the hashing. Now, on the BIDX Supra, they give us the ability to actually monitor the temperature of the ASIC, that main hashing chip here underneath the heat sink and the fan, so we can keep track of it as the BIDX starts working harder, and especially if you start overclocking and push things harder and harder. Now, on top of that, with the next-gen version, the BIDAX Gamma, they also gave us the ability to monitor the temperature of the voltage regulator as well, because that can also get hot. Now, there's a couple other components as well that can also get hot that we don't actually have the ability uh, to monitor the temperature of directly. And so for that reason, uh, we're going to go ahead and use a thermal camera here to point out some of those components, and then we'll take a look at some of the options to uh, add some additional heat sinks like this, so uh, to keep the backside cool and the front as well, compared to what you get with a stock bit axe. Now, if you haven't seen this yet, this is the best article that I found when it comes to overclocking the bit axes and keeping them cool. This was put together by Andreas, who's Trendcraft on Twitter, and it covers just about everything you need to know when it comes to overclocking, uh, the actual settings and how to do it, airflow, different cases, and of course, a variety of different cooling options. In fact, a lot of the information for my video series on overclocking actually comes here from this article. So down in the description, I'm gonna to link to both my video as well as this article, of course. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at some of the additional heat sinks that you can add here to the bit axis. Now, if we take a look at a stock Supra and a stock Gamma, on the front, they're gonna look pretty similar. However, on the rear, they are gonna be a little bit different. So what I wanna point out actually is if you take a look, there are some added heat sinks uh, right here kind of behind the rear fan, uh, right back there, as well as like behind the actual ASIC itself. You can see there's a big one there. Plus, of course, there's the big fan right here to help to keep uh, the rears cool. Just because the 1370 here on the Gammas actually do run really hot. Things are a little bit different here on the Supra. As you can see, it doesn't run as hot, so it doesn't have all the same heat sinks back there, and there's nothing right there. However, we have found that uh, when you get into overclocking, uh, it can actually be helpful to add some additional heat sinks back there. Uh, there's a couple areas in particular that tend to get pretty hot. You've got uh, the MOSFETs right here, Q1 and Q2, as well as kind of like this spot, and then some of these capacitors right there. Interestingly on the Supras, we don't find it super necessary to cool the backside of the ASIC. Uh, it's mainly just kind of this stuff up here. And also, uh, if we flip these around, you'll notice that uh, like right here on this spot, that can actually get uh, kind of hot as well. Now to get a better idea of this, let's go ahead and take a look at this bit axe, but now under a thermal camera to see the different temperatures and hot spots here uh, on the bit axe. Now the temperatures that we see are gonna vary, of course, from uh, one copy of the bit axe to the next, as well as like how far you overclock it and how hard you push it and stuff. But let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the different spot, hot spots here, uh, front and rear. Now starting off here first with the front side of the bit axe, uh, it's been running up here for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes or so. Uh, but you can see the maximum temperatures it's reporting are about 82 degrees Celsius. And that hot spot uh, is just to the left and just under uh, the input for the power supply. Now I suspect actually the reason that's hot is because of what's going on here on the back side of the bit axe. You can see the hot spot here on this side is what, uh, just over 90 degrees Celsius. That's where we saw those two MOSFETs at the top uh, that I'd pointed out earlier. Just underneath, if we use kind of like maybe the white indicator, it's telling us that's what, 70 degrees Celsius or so, 60 degrees, depending on where I point it. So that's getting hot as well, but if we move the white crosshair up, uh, we can see it's getting closer to 90 degrees there, 91. So that's definitely gonna be the hottest spot. Uh, what about maybe like this, put the white crosshair? That one's at what, 66 degrees. So warm, but definitely not as warm. Now, interestingly, if we move to the backside here where I've got the white crosshair, that's uh, the backside of the ASIC. That's also pretty cool too. That's what, 60, 62 degrees, kind of in that range or so, if I keep it steady. So it looks like definitely the hot spot that we're seeing is gonna be right up here where the white cross there is and the red one keeps pointing to. The red is like the hottest spot. <laughs> uh, so this is definitely gonna be the area that we're gonna to wanna to cool down the most. And I presume that's also why we're seeing uh, the extra heat being generated here on the front of the bit axe as well. And to help keep things cool, we're gonna start adding some heat sinks to the front and rear here like this. Now there's all sorts of different uh, heat sink kits you can get like this on Amazon and wherever else. Uh, copper is gonna be kind of your optimal material to use, but you can also use something like aluminum. Uh, these ones, if you look at the backside, there's just like this double stick tape that you can peel, and then you're gonna stick it to whatever you need. There's like a thermally conductive paste right there, so it's gonna stick. 
uh, to the bit axe and help to uh, bring all the heat over here to the heat sink. Now, uh, if you take a look, I guess we'll start over here with the front side. Uh, when I did this one before, based on photos I saw online, I think that works fine, but looking uh, through the thermal cam, it's actually a little bit lower, kind of like on that spot. So I think I'm gonna, for this one, actually mount it a little bit lower. So I'll go ahead and peel this tape off here like that. And if we take a closer look, we've got the MOSFETs right there on the back. They're kind of just underneath the uh, power plug right here. Uh, and if you look at like maybe this side of the power plug, there's a little part right there that kind of sticks up. Uh, hopefully it's in focus, but uh, I'm gonna put this, I guess, right underneath and try to get it nice and flat uh, against the PCB uh, so it sticks nicely. And so now you can see with the new one, I've got it mounted here just like before, but I did mount it a little bit lower. I didn't actually look on here <laughs> with the thermal camera. Uh, so I think this is probably gonna wind up being a little bit better. But we also definitely want to do uh, the back side next as well. Now, taking a closer look at it, we're definitely going to want to cool these two MOSFETs right there, Q1 and Q2. Uh, I've also seen a lot of people put a heat sink there as well. It didn't seem as hot, but I might as well for good measure. Uh, also, in the past, when I was playing around with this one right here, this heat sink did come off initially because I was using a smaller one like that. Uh, and I noticed these spots right there, these little capacitors are actually really tiny. Uh, so there's not a lot of like contact area and surface area. So I did find using a little bit larger heat sink did actually help to uh, keep it on and not get it like knocked off or anything when it was mounted. Anyways, I'm gonna grab a couple heat sinks out of the pack and let's start sticking them on. We could start here first with uh, these MOSFETs. Next, we can add one right over here, kind of like this, push it down. And then lastly, we can go ahead and stick another one on right over here. And now we've got our three heat sinks right here on the back of the bit axe. Uh, and then over on the front, we've got one right there as well. Uh, next, I guess we can go ahead and power it on. Uh, again, I don't have a good way of actually monitoring the temperature of these different parts of the bit axes. Uh, the only spot that it's got as far as uh, temperature monitoring, monitoring, especially here on the Supras, is just for the ASIC itself. So it's gonna be able to tell me that temperature, uh, but nothing else. Now it's also worth noting that depending on what case you have, it might actually limit your options for adding some additional heat sinks, especially if it has kind of this like backing material, which does look pretty cool, but then kind of limits how far out you can stick out some of the heat sinks. Uh, I've noticed on some of the cases like this one here for the Gamma, they uh, kind of left it open here in the back just to have a little bit more room for the heat sinks you can see in there. So I just kind of want to try it here real quick on this case for the Gamma and see if I can add a few more. Or sorry, I mean the uh, this Super rather. We'll add one heat sink onto the front right here, then we'll take it out of the case. And I know I'm definitely not gonna have enough space here behind uh, this spot right there just because it sticks out so much, but we'll try to put some heat sinks here onto these smaller parts and see if we have enough room. It looks like these MOSFETs sit a hair lower, so I guess we'll start here first with these. Then we'll try putting it into the case here. Seems like that works okay. It's not actually even making contact with the back of the case, so that's good. And so next we'll go ahead and stick one on right there. Now I'm sure orientation of the heat sinks matter, especially if you're dealing with airflow and what direction the uh, air is gonna be traveling. I don't have any fans on the back of this one, so it's probably not gonna be as important. But nevertheless, I think I'll kind of stick it on here like that. Give it a good press, so hopefully it stays in place. Then we'll try putting it back on the case again. And it looks like we're good there as well. Same idea with uh, no contact. I don't think I'm gonna have the same amount of luck with this one, but just for testing sake, I can try that here real quick. And in that case, yeah, it looks like that's definitely gonna be making contact and kind of preventing the power cable from aligning properly. And you can see this kind of starts to get a little wobbly inside the case. So, yep, we're just gonna stick here uh, with just these two. But uh, either way, as you can see, um, I guess it would be kind of nice to have something without this backing if you do want to get into overclocking so you do have more options for fans, for uh, installing heat sinks, etc. Now, if we take a look at things here under the thermal camera, I've noticed some interesting things. Starting off here with the front, uh, you can definitely see that heat sink right there on the front. It is cooler than the rest. Like if we put our white crosshair on there, uh, the temperature at the top left is what, 27 degrees Celsius. It's not actually getting all that warm. I don't know how well this front heat sink is actually able to absorb and dissipate the heat. Uh, and if I contrast this actually to looking at the rear, this is a big difference. You can look at uh, this heat sink right up here, this top left one, on the back side of those MOSFETs. If I put the white crosshair on there, this is what, 63 degrees or so. Definitely lower than the 90 from before, and I know this is on the heat sink and not directly onto the chips, but this one is definitely getting much warmer. I think this is a very useful heat sink to help keep those MOSFETs cooler. Now, if we look over to the right, this one where I've got the white crosshair, this one is what, 56 degrees Celsius? I don't remember what it was before. I'll put the number on screen. Um, but again, 
yeah, it looks like this one is warming up. And interestingly, it's actually warming up more than this one here at the bottom that was on those like smaller capacitors. So this one is now at 29 degrees, 30 degrees. Definitely you can see it's darker and it's cooler than the other ones. I suspect this is probably due to the fact that those contact points down there were so tiny. So only so much of the heat, I guess, can get transferred to the heat sink. Uh, but I would assume it's better than before, but uh, it definitely looks like uh, this one up here at the top is really pulling its weight. Now, I know these are also different materials here. This isn't like a perfect scientific test or anything, but it's definitely interesting to start playing around with these and kind of see how well everything works. These are definitely starting to warm up here. You can definitely tell that they're on. They're also still seeming to be a little bit loose and wobbly, a little wiggly. I guess maybe the, uh, the adhesive needs a little bit of time to set, but either way, it's definitely nice to get some heat sinks on here uh, to help start cooling off this bed axe. And so, yeah, that was fun. Turns out it's actually more useful than I thought to have a thermal camera like this to be able to see like, you know, exactly where the hot spots are, you know, before and after and see how well the heat sinks are actually absorbing and dissipating the heat. Uh, I'll put a link in the video description to where you can pick up the heat sinks to a thermal camera if you want to pick one of these up. And then of course to different bit axes if you'd like to add some more to your collection. Um, if you have some additional information and insight, if you've been playing around with this as well, definitely let me know. If you've got ideas on like different heat sinks or different cooling options or uh, maybe better ways that I can install them and apply them, different orientations or locations or anything, definitely let me know. I'm by no means consider myself an expert here. I'm just kind of having fun playing with this stuff uh, while we're discussing this all online and then figure while I'm playing, maybe why not point a camera at it and share it so we can all learn a little bit more together. And if you're also enjoying uh, learning more about BitAxes and Bitcoin tech here like this, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get notified for when new Bitcoin videos go live. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> Hope you all have enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.